Imagine querying your SQL database using just your voice and getting immediate insights on your data and taking it a step further and asking the agent to also display charts and visuals using that data. All this is now possible with the latest release of OpenAI's update to the real-time API. And don't worry if you missed it because in this video I'll cover all the updates and explain exactly why this latest release is a game changer. I'll be breaking down the exact architecture and showing the differences between the older version and now with this newer version being able to use WebRTC. And then finally I'll be going through how I built the application using Windsurf but first things first let's see a quick demo of the app. Right then so here we have our SQL voice agent. It's a very simple clean UI to be able to interact with the agent here and essentially it uses OpenAI's real-time API but then in the back end we have our NA10 SQL agent. The one I've actually created a video about this so you can check it out and first thing you have to do is just connect it. It's very simple and this opens up the WebRTC connection with OpenAI and I just sure cut thing. it off. All right could you tell me the total revenue for 2023? added a mute button to be able to talk. Uh, essentially, this is the only part that the takes a while. The total revenue for 2023 is $47,554. That's and great. One Could you tell me the top five products by total sales? And it's the only thing that takes time. It's the actual fetching of the data. Otherwise, Here it's very are the quick. top five products by total sales. That's amazing. One That's amazing. Could you show me the chart showing this data? Here's a bar chart showing the top five products by total sales. Pretty impressive, huh? Anything else you'd like to explore? Yeah, that's great. Could you actually show me the top sales by month for 2023? However, this time I want it as a line chart. So let's see if it does that in one shot. And I won't pause it just to see. Here's a line yeah, chart showing the monthly total sales for 2023. I do have you my data. You can see the trends over the first few April, months. So that's fine. Anything else you'd like to dive into? Yeah, and if you didn't hear that, basically my dummy data is capped out April. So it's all working amazingly. So now let's actually just go ahead and see the architecture behind it and how it's built. So if you've seen one of my previous videos where I built an OpenAI real-time API agent, connected it with Twilio for phone calling and being able to also have a function calling in the back end via NA10. This worked great and it's still a very viable option when it comes to connecting the real-time API model with phone calling. And because it uses WebSockets, it still has that low latency. However, when it comes to building applications with voice capabilities, there's a better approach and I'll explain why this new update makes this possible. So this here is actually the previous way of building out the agent with connection to Twilio. However, we won't be covering that. What I want to show is the, the differences between before real-time API and now. So before real-time API, we had to go through different APIs to basically take in that voice input, translate it into text, process it with the LLM, then transfer it back into audio via text-to-speech API, such as 11 Labs, and then we output the audio. However, now with the real-time API, we're able to go directly from audio to the model, and that gives us out a very low latency audio response. And how we previously connected our application to the real-time API was via WebSockets. And this allowed for real-time connections and very low latency. However, we know all of this, and this is not actually something new. So now let's look at the updates and what's actually new with the latest release of being able to connect the real-time API with WebRTC. And this essentially allows for connection with client-side applications. And WebRTC basically means web real-time communication. It allows for bi-directional communication with very low latency, even faster than WebSockets between applications. And essentially how it works is we have a server and a browser. And firstly, what we do is we request an ephemeral token. We only use our API key to request a ephemeral key. And then the browser itself, we use that ephemeral key to connect with OpenAI's API and have a secure session. And this update isn't just about having quicker responses, it actually redefines how developers can use this to build real-time interactive applications. And it's because we're not limited to server-side functions anymore, we can now actually execute functions in the client side directly in the browser, and this allows for many capabilities. And as an example, we now have the ability to control the UI in the browser and asking it, for example, to change the font or change the background to this color. And there's a really cool demo of this by the Cloudflare developers where they showcase this. And also did a really cool demo showcasing how they can actually control a robotic arm via voice using a real-time API. Also with the latest update, they've introduced a few different voices that we can choose from, and they sound a lot more realistic. And they've also reduced the cost of running the real-time API. And they also introduced prompt caching, which allows for a further 50 to 80% reduction in price. With this update, we now have real-time voice capabilities, and we can build our applications that feel natural and very fluid and very human-like. And the simplicity of the integration of just being able to connect to one endpoint allows you to focus on building amazing applications instead of worrying about the infrastructure. So the possibilities are truly endless. 
this. So when it comes to building an application, I used WinSurf to do this. And essentially there's only two files that I needed to make this happen. Um, the instruction file here, which I'll go through in a second, and also the documentation, which we're now able to just basically copy the page and it copies everything and I paste it into here. And this will have all the different information that we need, including the function calling and everything to be able to build out the application and ensure that the model actually generates the correct code. Right, so let's go through the instructions file. So essentially I started off by giving it a project overview and asked it to create a project that implements voice enabled SQL agent that allows users to interact with databases through natural language conversations. And it leverages OpenAI's real-time API with WebRTC, uh, NA10 workflow for the backend, and then function calling capabilities to be able to call the backend and also to be able to generate the charts and the visuals. And this is a client-side Next.js application. I defined the technologies used here again. And then for the first core feature, we're building out the server-side API route for the ephemeral token. And this is what we use at the start of connecting to OpenAI to use the OpenAI API key to request the ephemeral token. And then it returns that token to the client, which then opens up the WebRTC connection. So what we have to do is create the env local file with our OpenAI key, implement the API route. And this is a very simple function that just calls the real-time API endpoint to get the token. And down here, I've pasted in some of the variables that we need to send to the API. So we have the model that we chosen. We wanna be able to do audio and text, uh, the voice I'm using verse. And for turn detection, this is essentially how it knows when we interrupt it. So we're using a server-side VAD, which stands for voice activation detection. And this is how we able to interrupt the agent. And we know exactly at what point we interrupted it. And this works really well. Um, we give it the instructions, the temperature, and then this is just the max response output is infinite. The second feature was the client side web RTC connection. So we create the page and this is the main page. So it fetches the ephemeral token using the API that we created previously. It establishes the web RTC connection and also manages the microphone selection and audio streams and handles the connection states and reconnection. And again, I've just pasted in some of the code to be able to make this happen. And for the third feature, we're creating the event handling via the data channel. And this manages the bi-directional communication with OpenAI using the WebRTC data channels. And how it works is that we basically send events every time there's a voice input or a text input if we want. And this is an example of how it does this. So we just send in a JSON in string format and we're creating a new response. We give it the modality, text or audio, and there's a few different event types that we're able to create. And this is all in the documentation. We also want to implement how we receive the events. So it does this via the response.text.delta. And we process the audio response for playback and manage the conversation state and partial messages. For the fourth feature, we just worked on the UI, making it modern responsive UI with React components and styled animations. Very simply just breaking down the different components, the background, the mic button, and then the messages list. So this is the response from the assistant and just add in some styling features. And at each stage, of course, we test it and make sure everything's good to go. We're able to communicate with the agent. And then at that point, only then did I work on actually creating the function calling for the SQL integrations and the data visualization. So here I've outlined how it does this. Essentially, it's using server-side uh, dedicated API route to call the NA10 backend. We're also tracking the user sessions using a ID that we send back to the NA10 workflow. And this ID gets used to track the user's chat history. And this is how it looks like inside of NA10. We have a very simple webhook to take in the incoming query plus the session ID and then goes through the SQL agent and then we have a respond to webhook to return the response. And I actually did the live build showcasing how I've built this, so check that video out. So going back to the instructions file, we have the final feature here, the data visualization component. And this uses the rechart library to create the charts. And it's able to support the following chart types. We're able to do bar, line, and pie charts, and also just the table view. And we're also prompting the agent to be able to look at the data structure from the response and then be able to select the relevant chart type. And then finally, we just some important notes. The token actually expires after one minute. So we need to make sure we fetch a new one for every new session. Uh, we want to include some error handling, audio processing. So it uses PCM 16-bit format for the audio, both for the input and the output. We need to define some connection states to handle the WebRTC connection and also have microphone access. And this was basically all I did. And if you want instructions on how I actually use WinSurf to build out these applications and using the instructions file, I did a complete masterclass on using WinSurf and building out these kind of applications. So click the pop-up that comes on the screen right now and watch that video. And with that being said, that'll be it for this video. I hope you found some value in this. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.